a teacher in Uvalde, Texas, who was shot three times by the gunman who stormed the school, is sharing his absolutely unthinkable story. So he says that he played dead for more than an hour and told his students to pretend to sleep to fool the gunman. However, all 11 of the kids in his class were killed. Here's more of what he told GMA. I get more angry because you have a bulletproof vest. I had nothing. I had nothing. You're supposed to protect and serve. There is no excuse for their actions. You can give us all the training you want, but it's, uh, gun laws have to change. I know that I will not let these children and my coworkers die in vain. Wow, I can't imagine what he witnessed. Al, as a former teacher, mm. losing all of your students? It's, it's unfathomable. It's unfathomable. And the fact that we're sitting here, I know how they do it in the military in terms of a court martial, but those, let's be honest, those police left, left them in there to die. Yes. That, that's no different than a doctor leaving somebody on an operating table while they went to happy hour. There's no difference in my book. And it, it, you thoughts and prayers and this is wrong and they were wrong for that, it's not working. I think that there should be some punishments handed out no different than if you abandon your post in the military or if you were negligent as a doctor and somebody died on your table we need to but we need to remove all the emotion because looking at that man he's got all the emotion from all the negligence so now it's time for us to do something punitive and do something with a pen and paper yeah this is the ripple effect i talk about this man's still alive but will his life ever absolutely be the same absolutely not Never, never again. And I don't know what the answer is because we talk about this day in and day out and nothing gets done, nothing gets passed through government. And it's almost to the point where it's like, what are we gonna do for ourselves, to fend for ourselves? Which is a terrible philosophy to think like, you know what, we wanna get rid of guns? You know what, I'm gonna start arming myself. Because as a teacher, if you're going out into the woods, you're gonna arm yourself with bear spray, even though you're not prepared to fight a bear. It's come to that point where, you know what, if I'm a teacher, just me, I'm not saying this is what I want for teachers, but if I was a teacher, I'd say, you know what, I'm gonna take some gun classes, I'm gonna learn how to defend myself, because at this point, if you're not gonna do anything about assault weapons, and now, which I'm all for the police, uh, I, I'm, I back them on the show all the time, but now in this particular instance, the police aren't even coming in to save you. So what chance do you have? You, your chance is, I'm gonna play dead? That's your only defense? After you've been shot three times, which you might play dead and so then it's actually like, die. So we've yeah. gotten to a point in this country where people are gonna start taking responsibility for themselves because no one else is doing anything. And it's a sad avenue to go down. And Erica, he also said the teacher said that he witnessed the shooter hide behind his desk when he, the shooter spotted the initial response of the police. And he hid there, almost waiting to be captured. At least that's what he assumed. Then when the police left the building, that's when the shooter exited around the desk, went into another classroom and more carnage. So yeah. that could have all been prevented. Exactly. What are you thinking? What is there to say? Like, honestly, what, what are we supposed to say? Like, this is the nightmare, right? Like, this man witnessed, he was in the room when 11 of his kids were killed, when they were assassinated, they were murdered, and he w nearly lost his life as well. You know, what? clearly these stories aren't shocking enough to move the needle. They're not shocking enough for people to concentrate and be like, this is the priority. Like, I don't, honestly, I don't know what else to say about it. Yeah, it's disheartening. And you know, yesterday on the show, we shared a new CBS poll that showed a majority of Americans favored many different gun control measures. But there's another part of the poll that's getting attention today. It shows that 72% of people think that mass shootings are something we can prevent and stop if we tried, like really tried. But if you break that down by political party, it does get trickier. 44% of Republicans said that mass shootings are something we unfortunately have to accept. That's compared to just 15% of Democrats. How do you feel, Jeff, about the saying that this is something that we have to accept? That it's very disheartening to even have that mentality to think like, put your shoulders up. I mean, just the Uvalde shooting, how many lives were affected? And when I talk about the ripple effect of how many thousands of lives, not just the 21 people who died, I'm talking about the ripple effect of everybody affected, not only in that town, not only in the state of Texas, but throughout the whole country. How many people were affected? And now your answer is, I don't know, nothing we could do about it. 
There's got to be something we could do about it. You can't just throw your shoulders up and shrug and say, I'm a Democrat, so I agree with everything here. I'm a Republican, so I agree with everything here. That's nonsense. This two-party system is nonsense. I'm not for it. Even if you watch me at home and you think I'm this way or that way, I'm 100% not. I ride that middle in this two-party system. Something's got to give here because if money is controlling one party and they're making all the laws, something has to give. Throwing your shoulders up is not the answer. Accepting this as a reality is not the answer. Well, I can tell you when throwing your shoulders up is the reality is when you firmly believe it doesn't affect you. Mm. Exactly. Uh, those right. numbers are a million percent representing those who feel like they're exempt. And the truth is, as we talked about it, when I likened it to the pandemic that we've been in for the past two and a half years, people don't get serious about it until it, it storms their home. You know, people hmm. don't get serious about it until they start losing people. And it shouldn't take the loss of life. We should not be quantifying life in this way, but that's exactly what we're doing. That's what the, that was the judgment call of the police officers who stood outside listening to children being shot was a self-preservation judgment call of, well, we'll just see, maybe it won't be that many. How else do you justify what happened? And How else are you doing that? Right, and you know, I. I I know that a lot of our viewers right now are feeling completely hopeless and helpless, but there is action that's being taken right now. There's millions of volunteers across our country every day calling senators. And guess what? Those senators don't pick, the, pick up, but the way it works is the secretaries write down how many phone calls they got for Roe v. Wade, how many phone calls they got for mass shootings, how many phone calls they get for gun, gun control. Let's say it's a red flag law. And depending on how many phone calls is running that week, the senator will be in debt to that. So the more we can flood our senator's phones, and what's really frustrating is it being state to state. Here in Colorado, we have some pretty great laws that, you know, we had Senator um, or Representative Tom Sullivan on here. Right. He told us all the, the laws that are in the works, and because we have Governor Polis, a lot of them look like that they may pass. Well, guess what? The neighboring states don't have those laws. So until it becomes federal, then we will actually see some change. But according to, I just want to leave on a hopeful note according to a number of different uh, senators in both parties they say that they've never seen momentum like this that they are encouraged by it in fact Democratic Senator Chris Murphy of Connecticut said that he has never experienced negotiations as serious as the ones currently happening and again there are things we can do to curb gun violence is it going to completely go away given how many weapons we have in this country probably not but right. we can curb it just, by having universal we, background checks by having so red flag laws but what why we have those here in colorado let's just admit it because horrific things have happened in the state of colorado where people said enough is enough and like erica said unless it comes to your home you kind of throw your shoulders up and i don't want it to come to my home if my son i don't even i can't I even can't, fathom because if it is I don't know what I would do. I really don't. I really don't know what I would do. I, I'll just say you know. this, man. When we start talking about, you know, trying to shore up schools and we start just trying to talk about how to shore up these soft targets, what we're not ever factoring in is the, um, the real human emotion right. and like how pain and sadness floats in the air. My mom lives in South Carolina. I've driven past uh, Emanuel Church with a uh, Dylan Roof shot nine persons. You can still feel it. Where do you guys think all this angst from the Sandy Hook parents, all their right. grief, all the grief from the Thousand that's, Oaks shooting, it's all floating around in the air, and that's why everybody's I, bummed right, out but, all the time. You're right, but it's also helped produce every town, right? Mm. It's helped produce uh, the Brady Foundation. It's helped produce Moms to Man Action. David I don't, Hogg and his I don't, yeah, the Parkland students. March for Our Lives. I don't want people to lose hope. I understand why why people feel hopeless yeah. and helpless, mm. but change is happening. I'm telling Thank you, it's going to take a, a while, and it's going to take us getting out there and voting and picking up the phone and letting our senators know that this is our single voter issue that That's we it. care about more than anything. And if we can all get on board, I'm telling you, we we can make progress.